Hi everybody, thank you for pressing play on today's video. It's Caroline here from craftycarolinecreates.blogspot.co.uk. Today's project is a really lovely way of gifting a bar of chocolate. It takes a pretty simple bar of chocolate and makes it quite special. This designer series paper that we have used for the box is not a designer series paper at all. We have made that using Reason for the Season, which is a great new stamp set. Um, so I will show you exactly how we build up this multi-stamped multi -stamped, stamped look. Oh, it's hard to say that. But basically the box is designed so that you pull on the ribbon and out slides your bar of chocolate. This is a full-size bar of Galaxy, well, what I think of as a full-size bar of Galaxy. You may have seen me do similar projects with mini chocolate bars, but this is a really good size, full-size bar. Um, and I think all that really is left to say is how we make it. So we're going to start with a piece of Whisper White cardstock. This measures eight and a half by seven inches. And we're going to stamp all over this using the Reason for the Season stamp set to create our own designer series paper. Now I've gone ahead and got a bit of a head start so we don't waste too much time me stamping a lot during the video. So I've started by stamping this outline pattern in the new basic black ink pad. Then I filled it in using this flower and cherry cobbler. The leaves are using this stamp set and I have used um, Old Olive for those. And then I finished it off, let me lift it up so you can see, with a little bit of delightful Dijon in the middle just to give that little yellowy glow in the center. There is one flower left to do though, so let's do that now so you can see exactly how it works. So let's start with Cherry Cobbler and I've already mounted this stamp set here. So as it's photopolymer, it makes it really, really simple. Now let me just show you that the stamp set does have this little tab section here. So the idea being that you can line up all the tabs on the successive stamps to make it easy to stamp that image successively. But, because um, I've been twisting it to get an unusual pattern, what I find it easier to do is take this large... Um, petal here as my anchor point because I know that goes into this large outline here and then all you need to do is and it's a bit hard for me to do it on camera because I can't get right on top of it but what I find is the easiest thing to do and I'm just going to stand up actually oh, so I can try and do this and show it to you at the same time so we want to line up our petals let me see, can you still see that? Line up our petals with our stamp set. I find it easiest, again, once you've got your anchor point, to line up the central petals and then you can stamp the rest down, just like that. And I don't think it really matters if you go over the edges a little bit. I don't think it does actually perfectly line up. Then we're going to do the leaves. I think they're going for quite a, a sort of a rustic look and what actually also looks lovely is if you don't stamp the outline and just stamp this um, this petal image it's a really sort of whimsical watercolored sort of pastel-y um, effect on the flower there. Now we're going to do the leaves so again we're going to ink these up this time we are using old olive for those and again, a good way to do that, to what I use as my anchor, is these two leaves are together, correspond with these two leaves here on the stem. So again, line those up. And then just stamp them down. You can see we, we fill those in. And the last one we need to do is our delightful Dijon. So there's a tiny little stamp here, which is for our little stamen in the center so I'm using delightful Dijon and we're just going to stamp that over our stamen in the center just gives a tiny little um, a little bit of a feature so that is our designer series paper made really simple so I just repeated that what I've just done all over the paper and now we're ready to do our scoring so let's bring in the scoreboard and with our longer sides, about eight and a half inch side at the top, and the pattern downwards, I just find it's easier to score the pattern down. It means you're, you're folding in the right direction. We are going to score this at three and a half inches, at four inches, at seven and a half inches, and at eight inches. 
Then give it a quick whiz round, 90 degrees, and we're just going to score it at half an inch here. Okay. And that is all of our scoring done. So let's move our board out of the way. Bring in the bone folder and just give a gentle fold and burnish to all of those score lines you have just made. And how lovely is that pattern? You can see how it's going to look beautiful once we start to, to fold it up. Okay, a little bit of cutting and just along the bottom where we have that half inch score line, we're just going to cut up to that one but along all of the score lines in the opposite direction and then cut off the very end square there and just going to notch out this little um, tab in the middle okay so just pop that down because I know a lot of you like to see what we are looking like at this point sorry notch that one out as well I forgot there was one here as well so that is basically the sort of shape you are going to be left with. To fold it up, we are just going to work out which side is going to be our back side. So this is going to be our, our front, our back effectively. So we want to make sure that this tab goes underneath. So we need to put a snail along here. So I'm just going to put snail along there to begin with. Okay. And then I'm also going to put snail all the way along this tab here, but on the opposite side to what we've just put the snail on. So for the end flap, it's on the print, and on the bottom flap, it's on our um, it's on the unpatterned unpa side. So if we fold this out of the way, because we don't want this to stick to that, so fold this up, and then just fold over your box. make sure well it's a bit harder to do that fold it this way that's better fold it this way out so it's not going to stick to the bottom and then just stick that down and that will make you um your nice little tube then to make the bottom up just fold in those side flaps there we go fold that bit we folded out of the way fold that inside oh, if you can keep a hold of it Fold that inside and then we just need to stick that down there. Okay, and we can see what we've made is effectively a sleeve that our chocolate bar will fit inside perfectly. Okay, just going to decorate this up a little bit. First thing we're going to do is make our mechanism for pulling it out. So I have here my handheld punch. This is the quarter of an inch circle punch and just going about an inch down and in the center just by eye i'm just going to punch that hole and see where that one is there then i'm going to get my ribbon so we're using this gorgeous um what is this called it is called striped gross grain ribbon in cherry cobbler to match our flowers just going to cut the end at a bit of a diagonal which will make it easier for me to thread this through the hole so we're going from the outside in the hole is a little bit small compared to the ribbon, but you should still be able to pull that through. There we go. Okay. Pull quite a bit of that through. There we go. Then what we are going to do is drop in our chocolate bar, but you want to drop it in so that it's going to pull the ribbon down with it. Like that. Okay. And then just cut off the ribbon so you have it about an equal length on either side. And what that will do is when you pull out the ribbon, the chocolate bar will come with it. Okay. So let's just push that back inside. Like that. Okay. So then I'm just going to match up my swags or tails. I think these are toy tails, aren't they, of my ribbon. There we go. And I'm going to use some of this gorgeous gold thread. Now this is um, my favourite item, I think, from the annual, the new Christmas catalogue. This isn't my third reel that I've gone through it. I'm going to miss it so much when it goes, um, when it retires after Christmas. So just fold those up. I'm just going to wrap this 
gold thread around the ribbon keep my chocolate inside oh it's a bit fiddly keep my chocolate inside there we go and just tie that off in a in a little bow thread that through oh it's a bit of a funny angle for me so I'm struggling to tie a simple knot because I've got a tripod in between me and um, the project. Just going to then trim off those ends there. You can see we've then got a really nice little opening in the equal size. There we go. You can also add a little sentiment. In the Reason for the Season set, there is this lovely one, Merry Christmas. So I have a little bit of Whisper White cardstock and bring back in my cherry cobbler ink that I was using just a moment ago. I'm just going to stamp that sentiment. Now these are photopolymer stamps, so I would recommend you put a full mat underneath. I've just forgotten to bring mine down, but um, it should still be okay. So stamp that down like that, okay? I'm going to punch that out using the decorative, decorative wind, what's this called? Decorative label punch, that's the one. Um, which is a really good punch. It's actually one of the first punches that I ever bought from Stamping Up when I first discovered them and I used it a lot then so sometimes I forget about it because I, you know when you overuse something. But there we go, that is that punched out. I'm going to also layer it up again using my decorative window punch. I'm going to just punch out another um, piece of cherry cobbler cardstock. I'm just going to layer that up slightly like that, just slightly offset, just to give a little bit of an accent. I'm going to use some, I was going to use dimensionals, but again, I don't seem to have remembered to bring those down. So let's use a little bit of Tombow. And what I'm going to do is give it a little bit of a uh, feature by using some of this thread that I love, just to make a few sort of loops coming out of the card as well. See if this is going to work without dimensionals. Lots of tomboy and, and pray that <laughs> this will, will stick. So just stick that down like that. Over there, slightly offset, but with our... Okay, as I said, do this with dimensionals and it will look an awful lot better. Just gonna give put my scissors on there and give that a minute to dry a little bit. Keep that pressed down. And then a bit of tumble on the back. And I was hoping to use dimensionals for that. And I'm just gonna stick that in the middle there of my box. And there we go. A really cute and very pretty way of giving a bar of chocolate. I think I'm going to use these for sort of teacher gifts um, and also exactly how to stamp the wonderful reason for the season set. If you have any questions or would like to buy any Stamping Up products, please do not hesitate to get in touch. Thank you. Bye bye.